snowing. It's snowing out there. <laughs> Lovely. Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. You know, because sometimes my mouth goes a little bit faster than my brain. Okay? <laughs> so please, please, get the authorized version. Commonly referred to as the King James Version. Follow me along, word for word. Verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at today. <clears throat> we're going to begin in Acts chapter 15. And... We're going to be addressing something that we have discussed at uh, length before, but it, it just doesn't go away. And, you know, we are getting closer and closer with every day passing to the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. We are one day now closer to the redemption of the purchased possession than we were yesterday. Okay. That's obvious. And the closer we get, the worse it's going to get. And a question that you may or may not have encountered comes from the actual Hebraic people, the Jewish people. Now, a Jew, according to scripture, well, the links for that will be in the description box. We get into it in depth. A Jew, according to scripture, is someone who keeps the law of Moses, the Hebraic law. And when the scriptures say Jew, it's usually in correlation onto the Hebraic people. Okay? Uh, we're going to be looking at this today in John chapter 4, where our Lord says, uh, salvation is of the Jews. And Satan, with all of his ministers, comes along. It's like, well, what is a Jew? According to scripture, a Jew is someone who kept the law of Moses. Who was the law given on to? The Hebraic people. Those people taken out of Shem by God to establish the Hebraic line. you got to remember, Hebrew is associated first with Abraham. So the Hebraic line is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, those are the Hebrews. On to them were given the oracles of God. Okay, The law. So when scripture makes reference on to Jew, there is that in Esther where many people became Jews because of the fear of Mordecai and whatnot, okay? All right, but a Jew, according to scripture, is someone who keeps the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, okay? All right, that's what a Jew is according to scripture. And a Jew, according to scripture, is in correlation with the Hebraic people. So according to scripture, when scripture says Jew, they are talking about the Hebrews that came out of Shem, not Ham, not Japheth. Okay? All right? Questions about that? There are videos in the description box for you. What is a Jew? Okay, check that out if you have any questions. All right, because we're going to be using that term Jew. All right, all right. But if you encounter Messianic Jews, you might have, might have or not have encountered this question. Has Jesus made you Jewish? Hmm. Oh, and incidentally, in response to an email, I am not a Hebrew, okay? Uh, my bloodline is of Japheth, actually a Spaniard, okay? But you can, you will encounter that maybe, maybe not. It de depends if you've uh, encountered any uh, uh, Messianic Jews or anything like that or have witnessed to any Hebraic people, Jews, okay? 
most of the Jewish people that I have encountered who believe in Jesus Christ, who are of the Church of the Living God, rightly so have a big problem with Christian. Why is that? Because the Jew associates Christian with the Crusaders, with the crosses on their tunics. When they were put in front of these monks and priests uh, to try to be converted, and if they fell asleep, they were poked with pokers and stuff like that. The programs and all that stuff. The Holocaust, okay? The Holocaust, which was a result of Catholicism. When we, if we, let's not sugarcoat anything. Catholic is Christian. Christian is Catholic. The faith once delivered onto the saints, um, it's not Christianity. Okay? Our Lord himself calls us saints. But the Messianic Jew may encounter a Christian. It's like, well, you believe in Jesus? Why aren't you a Christian? And like I said, most of the Jewish people, most, there are some Jews out there who affix to themselves actually being saved Christian, which for a Jew to take on the word Christian for themselves, the like of it I would be it would be compared to if you a Hamite were to affix yourself to the Ku Klux Klan. Or me, a Japhethite, to affix myself with the Black Panther Party. Okay? that That's what that is like. That's what that is like. And uh, if saved brethren, saved Jewish brethren of the Church of the Living God. You know? Even they, the, the ones that I have encountered. Not all, but the majority are like, yeah, when you say to me, Christian, you know. They think about Rome. They also, you know, they, they you look on the television at the world today and these Christians like the Andrew Womack and stuff like, <laughs> like that. And your Joyce Myers. And, of course, you got Pope Francis and whatnot, you know. But the Jewish people look at that Christian, Christianity. And they're like, <laughs> I don't think so. But they encounter uh, someone who's coming around calling themselves a Christian. It's like, you believe in Jesus? Why aren't you a Christian? They're counter. You believe in Yeshua? Why aren't you Jewish? Hmm. Hmm. And when they say Jewish, and those of you, uh, saved brethren, uh, saved Jewish brethren, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Why aren't you Jewish? So why aren't you calling um, Paul Shaul? Why aren't you referring to Jesus as Yeshua? And there's only one name under heaven given among men by where we must be saved. Whose name? Okay. Why, why aren't you observing the Shabbat? Why, why aren't you keeping kosher? Because pork, because because pork is such a disgusting animal, right? It's always about pork. It's never about shrimp or anything like that. It's always about pork. Hmm? Why why aren't you observing the feasts? Has Jesus made you Jewish? Now, let's let's be honest here. We're going to look at this today. Salvation is of the Jews. And when our Lord says to Jews, he's referring on to the Hebraic people, okay? Salvation is of the Jews. And is it not evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah? One of the tribes of Israel, the Hebraic people? So, salvation is of who? The Hebraic people. The Jews. Because our Lord, the Hebrew of the Hebrews... To say that there is no such thing as the faith that was once delivered unto the saints has a Hebraic root would be 
heresy. But see, the Hebraic root movement itself for today is heresy. Because at its root, it wants to bring you back under the law. Okay? You don't have to go along, walk around putting on kippers and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to do that. No, that, for salvation, that is not a requirement today. Okay? But is there Hebraic roots to the faith once delivered unto the saints? But, uh, hello? Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ is Jewish. Okay? He's a Hebrew. He came from Judah. Okay? All right? So, but, yes. Hello. Yes, there are, as it were, Hebraic roots to the faith. Absolutely. But see, when you run into these Hebrew roots people, they all want to do this. Acts chapter 15. When we're talking about this, uh, brethren, when you encounter these, Acts chapter 15, the book of Galatians. Okay? And also too, also too, before we get that, go to Acts chapter 15. Have, you run into a Messianic Jew. Okay, and I'm not I'm not labeling Messianic Jews at all, but uh, where I have encountered the most um, stern Hebraic or Hebrew root stuff is from Messianic Jews. Okay, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither barbarian nor Scythian. But we are all one in Christ Jesus, self ethically. There is neither male or female. There's neither black or white, Republican or Demokami, okay? We are all one in Christ Jesus. But, you know what I have encountered? In Isaiah chapter 9, go to Isaiah chapter 9 really quick. We're going to be in Acts chapter 15 to start. I asked, uh, I've asked several uh, Messianic Jews, when did the New Testament begin? You know what I've heard? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, capital W, Wonderful, capital C, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting, capital F, Father, the Prince of Peace. So wait a minute. Unto... Messianic Jews that I've encountered, not all of them. Um, so wait, New Testament began with, and you gave me Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. What are they saying? The New Testament began with the birth of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? The people of the Hebrew Roots movement who say that instead of saying Jesus, you ought to call him Yeshua or Yahashua or Yahashawashi, which we've addressed and that little video will be in the description box. And then they'll say, you need to read the Hebrew New Testament. There are Hebrew New Testaments out today. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. But see, the New Testament that is of the scriptures was written in Greek. God chose Greek. Okay. There is no Hebrew New Testament dating back to the time of the Apostles. None that I am aware of, okay? The New Testament that we have in the authorized version of the Scriptures, ask the Jesuit trained cemeterians. You got, it's Koine Greek. God chose Greek, okay? And God ultimately chose English to give the perfect word of God. And these Hebrew roots movement people say, well, you got to start learning Hebrew and start uh, calling them by their Hebraic names. And ultimately, you have to go under the law. So, yeah, rightly dividing the word of truth, again, comes into play when it comes to the Hebraic roots movement. Yeah, because you got to keep the law. You got to keep the commandments. 
you gotta you gotta start um sounding Jewish and you know it's not Paul, it's Shaul. Or it's not Moses, it's Moshe, right? Right? One uh, Messianic uh, brother, brother, his name was Mark, um, that I in, uh, encountered uh, one time. He kept, when I was reading the scriptures, he kept trying to correct me, uh, you know, you know, Yohanan or something like that, or correcting me with their names. And he got on my nerves because he was interrupting the word of God being read. It's like, dude, will you shut up? <laughs> Unfortunately, it became, it got kind of ugly. <laughs> it's like, I'm reading the scriptures and here's a guy reading along and whatever. And a translation given to him from Rome, he was reading the, um, uh, the complete Jewish Bible, which was based off of Romish manuscripts. Okay. He was reading that. And he kept correcting me, reading the scriptures. And I, you know, a couple times, and I, I give him that look, it's like, dude, be quiet. Reading the word of God. Kept correcting me. It's like, it's not that. It's not, it's like, dude, will you shut up? And, that, and unfortunately, that, what I should have done, I should have just closed the scriptures. It's like, okay, you don't want to hear this. Okay, but no, at that time, I was still young in the faith too. That, that caused a big flare-up hemorrhoidal argument. Okay, <laughs> there's nothing really more irritating than that. But ultimately, the thing of the Hebrew roots movement is to get you back under the law. And also they do not rightly divide the word of truth. See, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth would solve so many problems. But Christianity, a majority of the Messianic Jews don't rightly divide the word of truth. But now go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. This, this was answered. Okay? The Hebrew roots movement of today, has Jesus made you Jewish? Ah. Acts chapter 15, to start, verses 1 and 2. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner, manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now, being circumcised, as Paul would talk, go on to talk about in the book of Galatians, any man, if you get circumcised, you are a, a, obliged to keep the law. Okay? We here in like the States, here in America, most men, children, most are circumcised at birth. Okay, without without even the parents being aware of what is going on, you yeah, okay? That you know that's that's an ignorance. Okay, but if you find out about who Jesus Christ is, and then a Judaizer comes along and says, "Well, you got to keep the commandments. You got to go under the law." It's like, oh, so that means, and according to the law, I have to be circumcised. So what they're saying is, unless you be circumcised, going under the law. Okay. When Paul, when therefore Paul and Barnabas, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Okay, the Jerusalem conference, as you, as it, as it were, as you will. Okay. Now skip down to verses 6 and on to verse 11. Now, James, the Lord's brother, James, the Lord's brother, who is the author of the book of James, not the son of thunder, okay? Not the son of thunder, all right? But James, the Lord's brother, he's in heaven. He's in heaven. He is our brother. James, the Lord's brother, struggled with this, well, you Gentiles, this is all we expect from you. Us Jews, we he struggled with that. And the link for that will be in the description box. The Lord's will done, but maybe not our way or something like that. If that's the title of it, that will be in the description box. Check that out. Check that out. Okay. But Acts chapter 15, verses 6 on to verse 11. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider this matter. 
for to consider of this matter. Excuse me. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up, who was um, a, a pillar, an elder. He wasn't the head. Scripture gives us evidence that it was more James, not Peter. Another swipe at Peter being the first poop. Okay. Peter rose up and said unto them, Men, brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Verse 9 is very important because the, you know, and like I say, I'm, I'm saying Messianic Jews because I have encountered this from Messianic Jews, okay? They teach that God is today a respecter of persons. Well, okay, yeah, 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 we're, we're all one in Christ, but see, you Gentiles, you Gentiles, See, that's the fulfillment of Romans chapter 11, that jealousy, okay? The Jews are not jealous of Christianity. They're not! They're not! They've, they've clicked off the TVs, they've turned their backs on this stuff, okay? And rightfully so! The Jewish people are not jealous of what this Christianity is. There's no way, okay? There's no way. But, let's continue. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? No one can keep... We've talked about this at length. But see, this is something that keeps coming up. It's not going to go away. Actually, it's going to go wor get worse. Okay? You can't keep the law today and be right with God and be saved and stay saved. Under the law itself, you couldn't keep it perfectly. Only God, manifest in the flesh, could keep the law perfectly without even having a sinful thought. Okay? No one can keep the law perfectly. All right? No one could bear the law because it can't. If you offended at one point, you offended it all. Okay? You couldn't keep it perfectly. All right? The law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. All right? Okay? Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they, by grace through faith, apart from keeping the law, because you can't keep the law perfectly. It is not a salvific requirement today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? But see, you get the Hebraic roots movement people coming along and saying, uh, just like just like these uh, black Hebrew Israelites, you gotta keep the commandments, okay? Or like the Brizraelites who want to attack me last night. And it's like, dude, you you didn't know who? You, what you think I don't know that was you? <laughs> Come on, man. But anyway, anyway, big part, okay? Yes, by grace through faith, you don't keep the law today, okay? Brethren. As time progresses, this is just going to get worse and worse and worse. Worse and worse and worse. Now, skipping again, going to verse 13, on to verse 20 now. And after they had held their peace, James, who was more so the head of all this, answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles, to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Yes. And here he's quoting Zechariah. 
After this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I believe he's uh, quoting um, uh, Zechariah. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, set the Lord who doeth all these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, what our brother James struggled with was the us and them thing. He did. Uh, like I said, you check out that video. Uh, the Lord's will be done, but maybe not our way. Okay, about Acts chapter 21. Okay, check out that video. James, you know, and also in Galatians chapter 2, James sent them brethren where even Paul and Barnabas were uh, separating themselves from Gentiles. Okay? James, our brother James, struggled with this us and them mentality, which Paul beautifully addresses in Romans chapter 11. Okay? But, Verse 18, uh, uh, did we read verse 17? Verse 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Verse 19, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols uh -huh, and from fornication and from, and from things strangled and from blood. Three different dispensations. Before the law, under the law, and after the law. We are told not to eat blood, Catholic. Catholic. Okay? Remember that. When the Jesuit priest is, woo woo turning the water into blood, or the wine into blood, and the little flesh cookie you know, remember that. Remember that. But see, right there. Right there. But we were that but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Okay? Yeah, basic. You know what? Idols are nothing. Okay? Absolutely. But see, James James struggled with that. Because as you read in Galatians, now go to Galatians chapter 2 real quick. Galatians chapter 2, we're not going to read the, the, that part, but Galatians chapter 2, Paul addresses this. Verses 1 um, on to verse 5. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. He's making reference on to the Jerusalem conference, okay? And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now see, that's, that's one of the things of the Hebrew Roots movement. There is one gospel unto the Jews, and there is one gospel unto the Gentiles. So see, the gospel of the grace by faith is for the Gentile, but us Jews, yeah, yeah, faith is important, but you got to keep the commandments. We got to keep the Shabbat. We got to, no, no, no. So what, is Christ divided? Hmm? Is, is Christ a respecter of persons today? Hmm? In Romans chapter one, you know, where it's like, uh, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, okay? It says, also to the Greek, and the Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? There's one gospel, by grace through faith, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. There is not a prescribed way for the Jew in this dispensation, and a prescribed way for us Gentiles in this dispensation. No. No. Verse, uh, okay, uh, where, uh, verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, a Gentile, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, 
who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, the bondage of keeping the law in this dispensation when it is finished. Okay? To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Okay? So, in this dispensation, we don't keep the law. All right? And there, is not, there isn't one way for the Jew and one way for the Gentile. That, no, there is only one gospel today. There is only one gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection. You know, that it's uh, first, uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Here's the definition of the gospel. Verses 1 on verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, not being saved, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, of that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the definition of the Gospel for us today. Okay? And that applies to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? All right? Now, but see, go to Galatians chapter 6 now. Galatians chapter 6. Just two verses. Galatians chapter 6. Verses 12 and 13. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Okay? And, and you got to remember too, Paul. Paul. And also it's very interesting too that from the Hebrew Roots Movement, who they refer to Paul as Shaul, okay? A lot of them have doubts about Paul and question Paul because he's the one on to whom the gospel was given, uh, given on to, to make known unto people, okay? It was Paul. It was Paul to the Jew first and also to the Greek, the Gentile. But Paul is the apostle of the Gentile. And by Acts chapter 15, you know, the Jerusalem Conference... Everybody was preaching what Paul preached. Why? Because that was given to him of the Lord. But go to Galatians, uh, Galatians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Okay? And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And what wisdom is he talking about? You read uh, for, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay, he's talking about the wisdom of the world, man's wisdom. Okay, wisdom of what you know with uh, excellency of speech. Okay, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Meaning, who has died with Christ? Who went the way of the cross and is dead to themselves, their self righteousness? Okay. And that is to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, Greek is Gentile, okay? One gospel, okay? One gospel. And I know several, several Jewish people who are truly saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, wherein them is evidently Christ crucified. Evidently, yes, absolutely. And see, and see too, in uh, Galatians chapter 3, go back to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 and 29. Salvifically. And see, the Hebrew roots people say, salvifically, you got to go and be Jewish. You got to keep the law. That's what they're saying. You got to go under the law. And they, they cleared this up in Acts chapter 15. Okay? And, and, and it's not about denying, yes, Jesus Christ is a Hebrew. 
I mean, yes, salvation is of the Jew. Yes, hello. Yes, there is obviously Hebraic roots to the faith. Absolutely. But like I said, the Hebrew, the Hebrew roots people want to bring you under the law. It's us and them. It's us and them. You, you Gentiles, you know, that's all we expect from you. But us Jews, we have, we have all this stuff we have. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. But like I've said, I've encountered that. When did the New Testament begin? Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So, the New Testament began with the birth of Jesus. <laughs> no! Began with the death of the testator. See, see, that's why the book of Hebrews, for the Jewish people, during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? That's why that's there. The book of Hebrews, to explain what you and I already know onto the people who finally wake up when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is in the third temple looking in his visage, thank you, brother, as the Roman Catholic Jesus, saying, I am. They're going to be like, wait a minute. That's, that's why Hebrews is written in the style it is. That's why it is written the way it is. Okay? But, okay, Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 and 29. And see, these Hebraic roots people, just like the black Hebrew Israelites, like the Brizraelites, and so on and so on, the Charismatics, they're all saying that God is a respecter of persons. Twenty-eight and twenty-nine in Galatians three. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. And of course, we 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 got to go to Colossians. These are familiar. It's like, Brad, you're talking about this again. Well, it came up again, okay? It doesn't, you know, uh, uh, somebody, uh, one of these people sees the, that video about what is a Jew or starts watching it, get the email. It's like, you're teaching people heresy. You're teaching against the law. Oh, dude! <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 11. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And see, you got to remember, under the law, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was not a permanent resident within the believers under the law. There was no eternal security. Once saved, always saved, was not under the law. That's for us today in this dispensation. And also for the 144,000 Jews, not Jehos, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. They will be eternally secure because they will be sealed. The 144,000 Jews, okay? But under the law, no eternal security. So what better way to puff up yourself than to keep the law and say and boast about how you do this? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay? So, the Hebrew Roots Movement. Has Jesus made you Jewish? Hmm. Well, 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 what do you mean when you say Jewish? Hmm? Are you referring to the faith of Abraham being Abraham's seed? Or, as they do, are you meaning that you have to go under the law? That I have to say that he is Yahshua? And he is Shaul and Kepha. Huh? Right? And Yohanan 
and I have to keep the Shabbat. Mm. And to, and not to read a Goyish King James scriptures, but uh, read that by Stern, the complete Jewish Bible, or the Tanakh, right? Right? And get you a... No. No. <laughs> now, go to John chapter 4. We are going to be reading verses 19 on to verse 24. And we're going to be having some stops along the way. We're going to be focusing on three verses particularly. Verses 21, 22, and 23 particularly. Okay? But we are going to be reading verses 19 on to verse 24. Okay? Go there. All right? John chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 24. The woman in the well. Of the uh, woman at the well. This is what this is talking about. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jerusalem at a temple. And isn't it interesting that many people who are claiming to be Jews, like Catholics, Okay, uh, say that you got to go to church. You got to go to a building. I heard that for the other day. Uh, someone's talking to my wife. It's like you got to go. You got to find a good church to go to. <laughs> that's that's Catholicism. That's Catholicism. Okay, but our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Okay, now. You gotta remember, Christ wasn't wasn't hadn't died, buried, and rose again the day according to the scriptures yet. There had he. No, the law was still binding. Okay, the law was still binding. So yes, under the law, you had to go to a temple. Yes, under the law. Yes, yes. But look at this now. Check out this response. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. You better. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. John 19. John 19. Just, just one verse. John 19, verse 30. Why? Do, okay. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? John 19.30 When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Yeah, yeah, it's finished. What does that mean? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. His blood shed on that cross. It's the atonement for our sins, the, that washes away our sins, okay? It has finished. He fulfilled the law in being the spotless, sinless, perfect sacrifice for sin, okay? God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, okay? The perfect, sinless blood of God, that blood that washes away our sins, it is finished. And at this time, it wasn't finished yet. Because he's, he's talking to her. But that's, woman, believe me, the hour cometh. What hour is that? The crucifixion. And it is finished when he died. And see, the Hebrew roots people, okay? And these people wanted, you know, like Mark the Messenger and guys like that. They want to bring you under the law. They're saying it's not finished. But that you got to do something. Okay? And, and now go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. It is finished. At this time it wasn't finished, was it? No, it wasn't. John chapter 3. Verses 14 and 15. And as Moses, Moshe, right? 
And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Again, there, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? But as Moses lifted up the serpent, he's making reference unto the crucifixion. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay? Now, go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? Like I said, um, when I have asked some... Um, when, I got, when I personally uh, have encountered a Jewish man or a Jewish woman who says, I believe in Yeshua. Oh, okay. So, you, you're saying you're saved. It's like, yeah, oh, good. Good. Praise the Lord. It's a special thing when a Jew believes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay? Can you tell me when the New Testament began? Like I said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. There have been some Jewish brethren that I've encountered, like, with the death of the testator. And then you start talking with them about rightly dividing the word of truth and there are some Jewish people out there who are our brothers and sisters who understand Ephesians chapter 3 who understand the grafting in okay they understand okay there are Jews out there who are truly saved born again converted of the church of the living God there are absolutely there are okay but Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 under verse 17 but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, past tense, talking about the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, where there's neither Jew nor Greek, okay? Male or female, bond or free, okay? By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. Well, I keep the commandments. I give tithes of all I possess. I fast twice. Okay. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God doesn't call you so you can just sit there and be idle and do nothing. You have a purpose. Yes, you do. To speak him. Okay. To speak him unto the lost, okay? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, because Paul is the apostle unto the Gentiles, as Peter was unto the Jews, okay? Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. In the flesh made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Okay? The blood is the bridge. Part of the bridge. The blood is the nails that hold the bridge together. Okay? For he is our peace, who hath made both one, which we already looked at in Galatians and Colossians. Okay? And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Well, there's one way to be saved unto the Jew and one for us Gentiles, right? That's what Hebrew Roots teaches. That God is a respecter of persons. That's what guys like Mark the Messenger teach. That's what the Charismatics teach. Unless you speak with some... Blah, 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 blah. Okay? 
having, ab uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Yes, because like it says in Romans chapter 8, he condemns sin where? In the flesh. Okay? For to make in himself of twain, of two, one new man, so making peace, of twain, two, what two? Jew and Gentile. Okay? So making peace. Shalom. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, the church of the living God, by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them, the Jews, that were not. So, Jew and Gentile. Okay? There's not, see, that's what the Hebrew roots people do. Jesus made you Jewish? You mean, am I keeping the law? Am I talking like a Jew? Am I reading all things Hebrew? No. It's not a requirement. Okay? If you want to, okay, if you personally want to start doing, you know, you want to go to the synagogue, and I've been to them, I've, I've been to the Passover meals, I've been to several of them, yes, okay? If you want to do that for your own, or if the Lord's called you, it's like, go oh, witness unto my people, go ahead. You start saying that's a requirement for salvation, that's heresy. That's contrary to Scripture. Why is it contrary to Scripture? Because, see, God does not change, but what changes? God doesn't change. What changes? How God deals with man. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Okay? If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, given me, which is given me to you, word, excuse me, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Oh, and, and mystery battle on the grave. They're all about mysteries. Because remember, the satanic, uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic trinity is meant to confuse you. Yeah, it is confusion. God is not the author of confusion. But the mystery. What is this mystery? Rome's all about mystery. You hear about the mystery of this, the mystery of that. Well, they're mystery Babylon. Okay, but how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is this mystery? Which in other ages, other dispensations, like the patriarchs, uh, the Garden of Eden, the patriarchs, the law, okay? That's what he's talking about was not made known unto the sons of men. <laughs> they were looking to the cross in the Garden of Eden. The patriarchs, they were looking to the cross. And under the law, they were looking to forward to the cross. Hey, hey, you even say yourself, Brad, about the Passover, the Pesach, Seder dinner with the, the, the blood on the doorway. Yeah, they were... That symbolized the cross, yes, but which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. They weren't looking forward to the cross. They weren't aware of uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Uh, dying, burying, and rising again the third day according to the scriptures. They, they were not, they didn't know that in the Old Testament. They didn't. Okay? which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his, unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself. What's this mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So has Jesus made you Jewish? No. No, he hasn't made me Jewish. See, when they say that to you, 
They're saying, you got to keep the commandments. You got to start saying Yeshua and Shaul. Okay? You got to start wearing kippers. You got to start observing the Shabbat. You got to do things that are pertained under the law, which Acts chapter 15 clearly refutes. Because why? This is a different dispensation. What began this dispensation? The death of the testator. Not the birth, dear friend. Not the birth. Okay? Like I said, I, I've, I've, I've encountered that. Unto us a child is born. No, 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 You look in Hebrews. You look in the book of Hebrews. Uh, the death of the testator. Who's the testator? Jesus Christ. He brought in this dispensation. This, the New Testament. Well, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It, yes, yes, okay. They're, uh, they're canonically the New Testament, but, but, but until he died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scripture, until he died, doctrinally, that was still under the law. Okay? It's very simple. This is very simple. But now let's go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Look, I know we've talked about this before. But you know, if I'm going to keep getting emails about it, and you people who ask me about this don't want to sit and watch the videos, it's not my fault. It's not my problem. Okay? So here's another one. Romans chapter 11, verses 15 under verse 24. For if the casting away of them Casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. What shall the receiving of them be? But life from the dead. So wait a minute. Casting away of them. The, the Hebraic people. So what? So yeah, it's no more Jews. So like, you know, replacement theology. What do you do with this? Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye, what? Ye know not, what? Ye not, what ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God, to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Verse 4. What saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Okay? No, God hasn't cast away his people. But see, before he died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, he came offering the kingdom, the actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven, unto the Jewish people, where he would be their king, reigning as the son of David. They rejected that, prophesied that they would. Died, buried, and rose again. It is finished, paid for our sins. Okay? Then the gospel was preached unto them. Within this dispensation, it is this dispensation. Yes, it was. With the death of the testator, this dispensation of grace through faith, okay, went to the Jew first. But Jewry rejected the gospel officially in Acts chapter 7. And then after Acts chapter 7, you see us Gentiles being brought in. It was already this dispensation by grace through faith. What happened was, us Gentiles were grafted in as it was prophesied even in the book of Isaiah. Okay? All right? So God has not cast away his people. The apple of God's eye is the Jew. Okay? Jesus is a Jew. Yes, there are Hebraic roots to our faith. I mean, come on, yes. There are, obviously. All right? But... That does not mean that this dispensation that you have to do those things under the law to be saved, to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. No! It's finished! Okay? Let's continue. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay? The Jewish people in Israel today, would, this world would have been a whole, whole different place if um, they had accepted their Mashiach, 
Because that jealousy, that zeal that they have to keep the stuff of the Talmud and their Kabbalistic magic, if they had that kind of... Like for Eli Wiesel, Eli, uh, Eli Wiesel, you know, Knight, his book about uh, him going through the Holocaust, they were reading the Talmud, uh, doing their Kabbalism and stuff like that. That kind of zeal that they had, or even after the Holocaust, they wanted to reestablish all that stuff. If that kind of zeal was there for their Savior, wow! Our enemies, like my, my greatest enemy, they have a zeal. Oh, they have a zeal. But see, their zeal is for the devil, okay? If that zeal that our enemies had were actually for the true Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures, wow! I have often said, if some of these my enemies, or our enemies, uh, were actually saved, wow, man! What? Wow! Wow! That would, wow! Wow! You know, if they would use that kind of vehemence to defend the true faith rather than attacking it. Wow! Okay? Wow! For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? God chose the Jew, the Hebrew, out of Shem. Okay? And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, now he's describing us Gentiles being grafted in, okay? And note the word some, if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And people like Stephen Anderson, the Catholics, you know, who are replacement theology. Yeah, we haven't replaced the Jew. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. Okay? And scripturally, a Jew is a Hebrew. A Hebrew is taken out of Shem, not Ham or not Japheth. Okay? Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well... Because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Talk to some Christians. It's like, have you, have you, has the Lord led you to witness to any Jews? Oh no, it's my time to find favor. My time to be blessed. You know, I'm, I'm looking to get my financial breakthrough. Or, or, or whatever. I think that's because most Christians realize if they go to an, a Jew with what they call Christianity, they're going to be laughed at. They're just going to be ignored. Okay? Like I said to you before, the Jewish people that I've encountered, see, when you talk to a Jew, you go to the scripture. Okay? Oh, come to our church. No, 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 no. Like I've said, the uh, Jews that I have encountered... Virtually all of them. It's like they have this thing. It's like, look at oh, this is so cute. You think you know our God? Then you start talking to them through the scripture. There, that goyish King James, right? And then they're like, "What? Wait a minute. What are you? Wait a minute." And then that jealousy. That jealousy. The Jews are not jealous of that. And if they are, then there's problems. Okay? <laughs> For if God, verse 21, For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and verity of God, and severity of God, on them which fell, note, not fallen away. Safe people don't fall away. Okay? Uh, on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And being cut off, this isn't about salvation. 
This isn't about salvation because in this dispensation, we are once saved, always saved. Okay? Um, if we deny him, he will deny us. Okay? You gotta remember the ultimate definition of a word or to define things is the scripture, define things is the scripture itself within the context. Okay? And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. And what are we reading to here? Verse 24. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, the salvation is up to Jews. We're going to look at that, okay? How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. How much more if a Jew actually comes to true scriptural salvation on their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Okay? And see, you got to remember. You got to remember. We being grafted in has a purpose in God's plan. What is that? What is that? Uh, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And I have seen and encountered that jealousy. When they see their God being demonstrated to them through the scriptures by a sinner who is chief. I've seen it. Oh, I've encountered it. Many times. That jealousy. And a saved brother, sister who is a Jew, who are of their salt, will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get jealous of seeing you Gentiles. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 I've encountered it. And, you know, the Jew, you think the Jews are jealous of this? Ask a, say, ask a saved Jew about Christ Mass. Ask the Jews about that uh, Christ Mass in general. They have Hanukkah. Right, but no. They have more sense than Christianity does. That's the point. And also here, in, uh, verses 28 and 29, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, the election, now here in this context, election, he's referring, he's talking about what? The Jewish people, the Hebraic people who are not cast away, okay? They are beloved for the Father's sakes. The fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Israel. Okay? That's what that's talking about. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And if it were, then God's a liar. Then we needn't worry about anything, right? But see, in Acts, go to Acts chapter 7 now. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verses 48 and on to 50. And um, John chapter 4 again. Jesus saith unto her, verse 21, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? Because the dispensation is going to change because Christ Jesus is going to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And us Gentiles are going to be grafted in. And Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 50. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne. He's Isaiah 66, or 65. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? See? The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why is that? Well, we'll get to that in a second, okay? But 
Go now to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Verses 24 and verse 29. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's, men's hands as though he needed anything. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. <laughs> Take that, okay? Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the earth, on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, <clears throat> that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And what are we, uh, 29? For in him we live. You're alive today because the Lord has allowed you. You have breath in your lungs because the Lord has allowed it, okay? For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. Okay? All right? So God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay? But see, Hebrew roots. You gotta go to a synagogue. Or you gotta go to a messianic church. Go to the temple. Okay? All right. Uh, one moment, please, brethren. Okay, sorry about that. I'm gonna have my window open. John, go back to John 3. Go back to John 3. Okay? John 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, naturally born, and of the capital S spirit, sealed, God within him, okay, this is what he's talking about, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, spiritual. This is not a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, okay? Kingdom of heaven is always the physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem. Kingdom of God could be a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. It depends on the context, but most of the time it's talking about the spiritual, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. And then you get these twits saying, oh, born again is only for the Jews. Wow, you see, the pettiness, the pettiness, the fetching at straws to do everything to be combative and to argue, to cling to heresy. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, yourself, ye, plural, must be born again. And the Bible is you, you. No. Thee, yourself personally, ye, more than one, everybody. Okay? Must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh? And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the capital S Spirit, meaning the Lord himself. Okay? Being born again. Okay? And being born again, of course, being a new man. And what makes you a new man? Okay? Okay? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. When you come to the Lord on his terms, the way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, and taking, manning up. Taking accountability and responsibility that your hand held the hammer that put the nails in his hands and his feet and put the crown of thorns on it and said, it's your fault. And in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saved you. You're sealed until the day of redemption. 
Okay? All right? That which is born of spirit is spirit. All right? Now, go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 23. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but by the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He never sinned. The flesh that Jesus Christ is come into, okay, that flesh itself was sinful. But because he kept the law, he didn't even have a sinful thought. He kept the law perfectly, okay? Because he did that, that sinful flesh was sanctified by him keeping that law perfectly, okay? That's what that's talking about, you little idiot, okay? And I wasn't calling you. That's for a select few, okay? Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, capital S, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Now, people will be quick to say that Paul never said the words born again, but he talked about being, putting on the new man, a new birth. What do you think putting on the new man is? It's being born again, okay? Peter here uh, verbalizes it, but see, Paul talking about being, uh, putting on the new man, it's virtually the same thing. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus, okay? You're born again. All right. Watch and also in the description box. Watch out for these heretics. Say being born again is only for the Jews. Well, obviously you're going to speak against it because you are not born again. You're not a new creature. Okay. Simple for that one. All right. And John chapter twelve, just one verse. John chapter twelve. John chapter twelve. One verse. John twelve. Verse twenty-four. John chapter 12, verse 24. Not 11, Brad. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. For something new to begin, Something old has to die. In order for you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus, you have to die to yourself and be born again of Christ. Not, you know, baptism is a public profession of an inner conversion. That's all that is. It's not necessary for salvation, Catholic. Okay? But see, the symbolism of baptism, you go down in the water, dying to sins, and you're raised up a new creature in Christ Jesus. The symbolism, not salvifically. Okay? Not salvifically. All right? In order for you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus, so there has to be a death. The death of your self-righteousness. And these Hebrew roots people are very self-righteous. Very self-righteous. Okay? Because now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 35 on to verse 38. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, made alive, except it die. Now, he's talking about the resurrected body, obviously, but we're looking at this for, again, in order for you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus, there has to be a death. Yeah, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Yes, yes, 
But have you died to your self-righteousness? That's where the easy believism devil comes in. Uh, they skip over scriptural repentance and brokenness and say, just believe, or just utter some things. They skip over all that nasty uh, scriptural repentance and taking accountability for what they did to the Lord. Okay? Uh, where were we? Where were we here? Okay. Yes, Bina, uh, where, where, where are we? 35 on verse 38, okay? Thou fool, verse 36, that which thou sowest does not quicken except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Now, like again, he's talking about the resurrected body. But we looked at this about the, verse 36. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. You have to die to your self-righteousness. You have to die to this incredibly stupid notion that you're a good person, or that you can save yourself by keeping the law. Okay? That God is a respecter of persons for what you do. You've got to be careful of that. And for in order for you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just one verse, verse 17, <laughs> okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, born again. He doesn't say the words born again. No, he doesn't. But he's describing the same event, Okay? And Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 on to verse 21, uh, 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 on to verse 24. Yes, Jesus saith unto her, verse 21 in John chapter 4, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 on to verse 24. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard, a, heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And of course that's a reference on to the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Be born again. Okay? He's talking about being born again. He doesn't say born again. Paul doesn't say born again. But he's describing, talking about the same thing. Okay? Okay? Unless you're born again, you're not saved. And someone who comes around saying, born again is only for the Jews. Ah, yeah, that... If someone's a Christian, being born again is just for the Jews. You run away from that because who, who, who makes a statement like that? Okay? A babe might. In ignorance. But, I mean, come on. Come on. Do you not read the scripture? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Yeah, where he says, uh, uh, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. Okay. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Dispensation change. Okay? And of course, it's talking about the uh, once saved, always saved, the seal until the day of redemption. Okay? All right? All right? Verse 22 in John chapter 4. Ye... Worship ye know not what. 
We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. And of course the devils come. Well what is a Jew? What is a Jew? A Jew is a Hamite. No he isn't. A Jew is a Japhethite. No he isn't. A Jew is a Shemite. Eh. Well no. Because the Japanese. They're Shemitic. But they're not Hebrews. They're not Jews. The Hebrew, the Hebraic people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were taken out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line. The Hebrew comes from Shem, but not every Shemite is a Hebrew. Okay? Okay? So our Lord says salvation is of the Jews. When he says that, Jews. Jews who keep what? The law of Moses. Who is the law of Moses given on to? The Hebraic people. He's talking about the Hebrews, the Jews. Okay? Go back to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. You know, at the time of this uh, ignorance, God winked at. Okay? Uh, uh, Acts chapter 17, verses 20 and 23, uh, 22 and 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar to, with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Skip down and go to verses 30 and 31. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, because under the law, it's like, look, look, the Gentiles, they're going to do what they're going to do. I want you, the Hebraic people, to be my witnesses onto them. Okay? That's how it was. That's what it was. And you read about this in Deuteronomy. That's what it was, his purpose for the Hebraic people under the law. Us today, as ambassadors for Christ, okay? You get it? But, and the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth every, every man, all men, everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Okay? And Romans chapter 3. Okay, salvation is of the Jews. We, we've, we've covered this many a times, but like I said, you don't want to take the time to watch the video. Can't help you. You're going to ask me redundant questions. Okay, redundant because I, I send you a link, you don't watch it. Okay, it's not my fault. It's not my problem. You don't want to sit there with the scriptures. That's not my fault. That's not my problem. Okay? It's not my problem. You don't want to hear truth. It's not my problem. Okay? My duty ends with giving this to you. And what happens after that, fellowship of saved brethren, yes. But my duty to preach the word of God, if you don't want to hear it, ends with me saying, here, here it is. Okay? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? If you don't want to hear it, fine. I can't help you then. Okay? I I, I give you a link after link. It's like, here, here. I've answered your question. Watch that video. Then you come back with a question. It's like, you didn't watch the, you didn't watch the video. You didn't. Can't help you. Okay? But Romans... Romans chapter 3, 1 and 2. Salvation is of the Jews. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, the Hebraic people. Yes, we know that the Muslims are, they practice circumcision. We talked about that, about uh, uh, the tribes of the moon videos, which are on the other channel, stuff like that. Much every way, chiefly because unto them, who? The Jews, the Hebraic people, were committed the oracles of God. Okay? Salvation is of the Jews. Okay? And 
Hebrews chapter 7. Oh, and brother, you sent me that thing about uh, our Lord, um, Melchizedek. Melchizedek in the Old Testament. Check that out. I know you're looking specifically for a certain word, but Melchizedek. Okay? An example. Paul doesn't use the word born again, but yet he talks about it at length. Okay? Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 on to verse 18. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood, don't look at me, look at the scripture, being changed. God himself doesn't change, but how God deals with man, that changes. Hence, rightly dividing the word of truth. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. And how is it changed? It is finished! For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Salvation is of the Jews. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, the tribes of Israel, the Hebrew. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus was not black. Jesus was not a Caucasian white man. That sounds like a brand of shoe. No. Jesus was a Hebrew. Jesus was Shemitic of the Hebraic people of Judah. Okay? Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Now let's read that. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is far and it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of a Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life, where he testifieth. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Now the law, it's not saying that the law is unprofitable because why? The law kept you away from sin. But see, under the law, you had to what? Continually do these things. Continually. Continual annual sacrifices. Con continually nipping off the head of a bird. Okay? You had to continually do these things. The law is good, just, and holy. Yes, it is. Paul talks about that in Romans 7. Description box. The link will be for you there. If you don't want to watch these things, and you're going to send me these emails, I'm not going to... Just, I'm just going to start not to be too nice to you. Okay? Or too polite, I should say. If you don't want to take the time, if you're going to ask me a 10-page dissertation question, and it's like, okay, read it. That, 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 I've answered that in the ear. I send you the link. And then, like always, they take the same question, repackage it, and it's like, you didn't watch the video. Can't help you, man. Can't help you. You don't want to watch, you want to just be disputatious? I ain't got time for that. Go away. Go away. All right? Ain't got time for that. Your question has been answered. But it's not my fault you don't want to watch or go through the scriptures. It's not my fault. It's not my problem. Okay? Verse 18. Again. 
For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. It's talking about salvifically. Because the law was a continual thing. Okay? And during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be all works. Okay? The law is going to be returned. Okay? Now, the sacrifice for sin has already been made, but in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And if you don't go to the Feast of Tabernacles and say, we're not going to go worship the Lord in Jerusalem when he's sitting on the throne and you're going to be able to see him, then you're not going to get no rain. You're going to be starved out, see? In a society, in, uh, in a society that's going to be farming. Okay? Read about that in the book of Zechariah. And also in uh, Amos chapter 9 too as well. Okay? And now let's also go to Romans chapter 2. And we've talked about this. You know, we've talked about this so much. But you know, like I said, you're going you're gonna to ask me these questions. You're going to be given references. And then you're not going to watch them. Or go through the scriptures. Go away. Waste my time. Okay, Romans chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 29. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Yes, if you offend at one point of the law, you've broken it all. Okay? Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature... If it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Outwardly, keeping the commandments, the carnal commandments, okay? We're going we're gonna to look about that, okay? Uh, you have God the Father within you, okay? This is talking about... For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Okay? Meaning, you're not saved today by keeping the law. That's what he's talking about. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And herein lies that thing. Has Jesus made you Jewish? Okay, we, I'm a Gentile. I am saved by the Jewish God, the God of the Hebrews, Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay, I serve the Jewish God. Okay, I serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, all right, I'm a Gentile. I don't have to keep the law today to be saved. Okay, I don't have to observe the Shabbat. Or Passover, okay? But we have the faith of Abraham, Abraham's seed, that will be in. I sent you that, but you didn't watch it, okay? That will be in the description box again, okay? Again, all right? We have that faith of Abraham, all right? So in that respect, as far as the faith, that was once delivered onto the onto the saints. Yes, that's a Jewish faith in Christ Jesus, in that it is finished. So in that respect, sure. But see, but see, when someone asks you, has Jesus made you Jewish? Without exception, it's always a reference on to going back under the law. And doing away with the Goyish things. And start calling them by their Hebrew names and stuff like that. And they mean it for salvation. Okay. That's what the Hebrew roots people mean. Okay. Jesus is Jewish. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. We already read. Is it, was it not evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah? He's a Hebrew. He's a Jew, okay? I love a Jew. A Jew saved me, okay? All right? I serve 
the risen Savior who's Jewish. Yes. Yes. Hebrew. He's, he's the God of the Hebrews. Okay? But he is also the God of the Gentiles. Okay? We've been grafted in. Made one with the Jewish people. So in the aspect of our faith, Yes, yes. An aspect of our faith, yes, yes. But see, when they, the Hebrew roots people, say, has Jesus made you, they're not talking about that. They are never talking about that. Never, never. Because it's the us and them thing. You got to be, you, you know, got to put on the kipper. You got to do, no, no. Those are works. That's what Paul's talking about. That's what he is saying. Because why? This is a different dispensation that was brought in with the death of the testator people. Okay? And Galatians chapter 3 now. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 14. Oh, foolish! Fool has said in his heart there is no God. Foolish. Behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? That ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? What? They didn't know Paul was actually saved, born again, converted, at the church of the living God? This is only what I learn of you. Received ye the capitalist spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? The law is not a faith. But the man who does those things will must even live in them. Okay? And my dear brother from Croatia, thank you for, for what you do in the comments section. Thank you. Thank you. And to all of you, thank you. Are ye so foolish? Oh, this only what I learn of you. Received ye the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You gotta keep the commandments. You gotta keep the Shabbat. That's what God ordained. When did the New Testament begin? With the birth of Jesus? No, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, my friend. Hmm. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that minister ye, ministereth to you the capitalist spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham? And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all the nations be blessed. We talk about this in the Abraham Seeds video, seed video, which will be in the description box. If you don't want to watch that, that's not my problem. Don't waste my time with questions that have been answered for you, but you just don't want to take the time to go through the scriptures yourself and be a Berean and search the scriptures whether these things be so. Okay? And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In these shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And here it is. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is prescribed in Scripture. It is what it is. Black and white. It's right there. Okay? You don't need faith 
to do the things of the law because it's the law, okay? The law is not of faith, okay? But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering for sin. For a burnt offering, excuse me, okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the capitalist spirit through faith. But that didn't get, like I've said, too, a lot of the Hebraic Roots Movement people that I've met, the one brother who was of the Hebrew Roots Movement who actually watched the videos and we were talking for a while and he's like, brother, thank you. Praise the Lord. Hebrew Roots is wicked. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, again. Yeah, but yes. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Yeah. Okay, yes. Hello. There are Hebrew roots to our faith. Yes. But see, you have got said. Change the narrative. Changing the meaning of things. Has Jesus made you Jewish? What do you mean by Jewish? Are you referring to the faith of Abraham or the keeping of the commandments? What do you what do you mean? What do you mean? See? And of course, uh, just a couple of one verse references here in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Okay? Romans about this, even the disgusting, easy believism heretics get this part right. Even they get this part right. Okay, um, Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? Then again, the easy believism heretic calls prayer a work, repentance a work, you know, and they, they say the works that are talked about in Ephesians uh, chapter 2. No, he's talking about the works of the law, okay? But, Romans 3.20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And, of course, Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, the Jews, the Hebrews, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Okay? <laughs> but when faith comes, we are no longer under the law. Okay? You're lost. The law is there to condemn you. Yes. Yes. And it's very striking and interesting that these people who are all about, you know, keeping the commandments and doing the law, well, yeah, they're lost. There are some that do that ignorantly. And if you want to know the truth, the truth is out there. The truth, come, let us reason together, okay? But if you don't want to take the time to hear the truth, then go ahead, take a long walk off of a short pier, and try your best to keep God's commandments perfectly. Okay? In Hebrews chapter 9, of course, we can talk about this and avoid Hebrews, of course. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We want verses 8 on to verse 14. 8 on to verse 14. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was standing, which was a figure uh, for the time then present under the law in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats 
and drinks and divers and divers washings and carnal fleshly ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation not the protestant reformation okay but christ being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once, Catholic, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god okay <laughs> this is very simple this is very simple and of course uh, Hebrews 10, 12, and 14. 12 on to verse 14. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever, one sacrifice, one time, not daily like the Catholics want you to believe, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfect forever, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Okay, so ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay, yes, yes, absolutely. Verse 23, but the hour cometh, the hour cometh, and now is. Stop, the hour cometh, referring on to the coming dispensation, this dispensation and now is Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? That's what he's talking about. And now is. The king was there present, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. God was right there. You could see the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where blasphemy of the Holy Ghost comes in. Jesus Christ is physically pre present there. Uh, that's when blasphemy of the Holy Ghost um, is... Um, uh, relevant. That's when you can do it, when he's physically present. He is not physically present on earth today. Henceforth, we can, you know, the unpardonable sin, that's not for us today. Okay? That is only when Jesus Christ is physically present on the earth. Like during the time of the, uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven, he's going to be physically present on the earth then. Okay? But the hour cometh, the hour cometh, making reference onto this dispensation. And now is, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He was there. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father, capital F, of course, in spirit, lowercase s, and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Hmm. Matthew chapter 24 for this. To, to begin, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Just, uh, where, where are we? Uh, verses 1 and 2. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's because today God is not doesn't dwell in temples made with hands as he did under the law. Okay, And of course he's making reference to, I believe it's uh, 70 or 90 AD when Rome destroyed the temple. I think it was 70 AD, right? Someone will correct me on that, but he's making reference to when Rome came and destroyed the second temple. Okay? All right, but and also in that, today he dwells in temples made without hands. Okay, all right, and now, and now Matthew chapter twelve, Matthew chapter twelve, verses thirty nine on to what is that that I write there? 
<laughs> Matthew chapter 12. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verses 39 on to verse 42. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39 on to verse 42. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise to judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth for earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here and behold a greater than the temple was there see man wants to worship objects man has a penchant for idolatry and we turn that thing to objects to idols. Idols is not just a statue or a Christmas tree. It is anything that takes the place of God in the heart. You may not worship it according as scripture defines worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's a stumbling block in your heart. And a greater than Jonas, a greater than Solomon, a greater than the temple is, is here. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He's alive. He's not on the earth today, but he is represented in we, his body, the church of the living God. Okay? You Hebrew roots people, you realize that there is a greater than you. Right? Right? Okay? And, of course, and uh, we made reference to this, Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. We already read a variation, but we're going to read it, uh, actually the quote. Verses 1 and 2, Isaiah chapter 66. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is that house that ye build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. And he is not doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. You don't have to keep the law today. Okay? When they say, the Hebrew roots people say, has Jesus made you Jewish? They're talking about the commandments. They're not talking about the faith of Abraham, the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. They're not. No, not one ever does. Okay? Okay? Because in that aspect of the faith, yes, but see, that's not what they mean when they say, as Jesus made you Jewish. Okay? All right, that's not what they're talking about. All right? I know. <laughs> I, I do. Okay? Psalm 51. Just one verse. Psalm 51. And see, and this is what a lot of these people, from the easy believers and her heretics to wicked devils in England, uh, this is what these people are lacking. Okay? This is what these people are lacking. Brokenness of their self-righteousness. Okay? They're keeping the law. They're keeping the commandments. Okay? They can say something. They just believe. Self-righteous. Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Yeah, I sinned, but they... 
it was them that caused me to, it was you that caused me to sin, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, I messed up. Yeah, yeah, I sinned against you. But if you hadn't done this, if you, if they had, yeah. Contrition, godly sorrow. Manning up and taking responsibility for your actions. Not blaming the booze and not blaming the mouths of, the big mouths of other people. Taking responsibility for your own actions. That's what you can't do, you bloke. <laughs> okay. And First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Accountability taking responsibility for your actions. Your hand held the hammer. Your hand put the crown on his, on his head. You laughed and mocked at the naked Savior who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And shed his blood, excuse me, on the cross to make atonement for our sins. And it is finished. I laughed at him. You laughed at him. That's what contrition is. And that's what all these people want to avoid. So, because they do that to the Lord, they're aware of it, I can do better by keeping the commandments. By becoming Jewish and keeping all the holidays the keeping, excuse me, all the holy days, the ones that are prescribed in scripture, not made from Catholics. Yeah. I can, I can say Shabbat and uh, uh, Pesach and Kepha <laughs> and Yeshua and Shaul, right? And uh, I forget how it said, Brit Chadashah, about the New Testament and the Tanakh, right? Yeah. Romans chapter 3. See, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. See, you're not a true worshiper if you're justifying yourself by keeping the law, because the law has been, it's finished, it's been fulfilled. In the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood he shed on the cross, okay? You taking it upon yourself to go under the law and to do all these things, you're not worshiping the Father in true spirit or in truth. You're not. Because you're doing it. Romans chapter 3. The most unpopular verses to the easy believism her heretics. 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they have used to see. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace... They have not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. That's talking about you. It's talking about you. John chapter 8. Two verses. John chapter 8. I was right there. Verses 23 and verse 24. And he saith unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Well, I believe Jesus is God. Oh, but because of Rome, you believe he is the second God of the three-person trinity. Unless you believe, for if ye believe not that I am he, Jesus is the Father. And if you, if the Father isn't the one who saved you, 
You will die in your sins. Hmm. And like we spoke about in the last video, the very first thing that Catholicism started to preach was what? One God made of three persons. It's Catholic. It's not Catholic. It began in Babylon, Egypt, and Catholicism perfected it. Okay? Turned it Christian. Okay? And isn't it interesting, too, that a majority of the Hebraic people that I have encountered, the same thing. They mock the Trinity because son of David, king of the Jews. You know, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The everlasting father. They have enough sense to realize that the Babylonian, Egyptian, pagan, Roman Catholic Trinity is satanic. I think that's why a lot of you devils out there hate the Jewish people so much. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 on verse 6. Now as touching things offered on to idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. But charity which is self-sacrifice, edify it. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be, for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we in him. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I were made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body, okay? All right? That's one and the same being here. The Father and Lord, our, G our God, Jesus Christ who is God the Father. Okay? All right? All right? And you know, too, Hebrews 11, just one verse, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And what is faith? Uh, verse 1 in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you can definitely see you take uh, keeping the law, right? It's a visual, carnal thing, isn't it? And we walk by faith, not by sight. In James, James chapter 1. Verses 5 on verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, the fear of the Lord, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verses 6 to verse 11. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, shew, uh, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? 
Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? <clears throat> Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Which, in John chapter 10, the Jews was like, uh, tell us if you be the Christ plainly. And he's like, oi vey! Oi vey! <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I've been doing all these things, but see, you don't have eyes to see. You don't have ears to hear. You want to keep your traditions. You want to justify yourself. Because what does our Lord say in John 17, 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And you need to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. But but see, then you, these guys are like, well, you've got to go to the Hebrew uh, New Testament. You've got to do all things Hebrew. God, verse 24 in John chapter 4, God is a spirit. And in your Messianic Bibles, you know, that disgusting Stern, Daniel Stern, I believe it was, uh, translation, the complete Jewish Bible, who used Roman Catholic manuscripts to create that. Okay? Oh, he... he, he based the Old Testament off the Tanakh. But when it came to the New Testament, where did he go? He went to Rome. He didn't go to the completed uh, canon of Scripture, the authorized version. No, he didn't. See, the Greek and the Hebrew, which one, okay, was used to give us the perfect product, the perfect Word of God. This you take and translate this into other tongues. You don't go to the Hebrew and the Greek. That has served its course to give us this. But see, in your Stern's translation, God is spirit. How are you supposed to know which one is which? Because God is spirit. No, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... God's righteousness. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the Sabbath. You got to keep Passover. You got to keep uh, the, sub the Shabbat. Okay? have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Um, how do they go about to establish their own righteousness? By keeping the law. For Christ is the end of the law for, er for righteousness to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? 
That is, to bring Christ down from above. Well, the Jesuit Catholic priest can do that, right? With their raising of the sun, S-U-N, bale cookie, right? And also with the, the chalice, uh, ooh, magic! It's magic! And make it blood, yeah? Or who shall it descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ again from the dead. So the Catholic Jesuit priest can call Christ down into a cookie and raise him up from the dead as well. Yeah. 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 Or, okay, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, okay? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And we've already read Romans chapter 3. Okay, I uh, quoted to you 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. Okay, are you going about to uh, establish your own righteousness? Pharisee. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But are you calling on the name of the Lord because you are broken of your self-righteousness and have contrition? Or are you skipping those things and, and just want to you know, say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. So now you're saved, huh? Yeah, right. Oh, and for you easy believers and devils, um, verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? It says believed. Yes, it does. Keep reading. And how shall they believe in him who, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 14 is talking about those of us who are called to the Lord to go out and to preach. We're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. Some, like myself, are called to this. Some are called to other things, okay? Because remember, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I know we've talked about this several times. And I know this is a basically rehashing again. I, I understand that. But you know what? If you're going to send me an email and links are going to be provided. It's like, here, these do your question. All the questions that you asked me were in those videos that I linked to you. But then you come right back. Not even, not even a couple hours later, you come back with the re with the same question repackaged. You don't want truth. You don't want truth. You just want to justify yourself. So, here's another over two-hour thing where we talk about this same thing yet again. Are you going to keep sending me emails about this? Huh? Still not listening? Still not hearing? Still not searching the scriptures whether these things be so? Daily? Go away. Get the, get the hints. Got no, got no time for that. Okay? So, has Jesus made you Jewish? What do you mean by Jewish? Hmm? Having the faith of faithful Abraham? Yes. In that regard, yes. Yes. Because salvation is of the Jews. We serve and worship the God of the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the God of all things. 
But see, when the Hebrew roots say, has Jesus made you Jewish? Why aren't you Jewish? You mean what? Why aren't I observing the law? Why aren't I wearing the kipper? Why aren't I keeping the feasts? Why, are, why am I not saying that Paul is Shaul and it's Moshe? Why am I not reading Stern's translation? That's what they mean. So when you run into people who ask you that, and also from Jewish people themselves who ask you that, um, start with, okay, can you tell me when the New Testament began? And if they go to Isaiah with the birth, then they'll tell you, it's like, okay, wait a minute. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And if they're not rightly dividing the word of truth, that's a problem. Because if the word of truth is not rightly divided, it all blends together, right? And it's a mess. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, brethren, and, and like I said, you're going to send me an email asking me questions about this. And I respond... And give you the, you know, hair, the, the, you know, everything that you asked me was in those videos. Answered. You didn't want to hear it. Okay. Here's another one for you. But see, brethren, this, this is, this is the way it is. It's, it's going to get, it's going to get this way. It's going to get worse. And oh, coming in 2020, uh, 2023. Oh. Oh, we need to settle it in our hearts, brethren, especially, especially what's coming, you know, and here in my nation, here in America, too, you know, with the coming uh, Jesuitical selection of a, of a president. We, we got to get squared away with things and keep our eyes on our Lord Jesus Christ, because... People who don't want to hear the truth are going to try to get us away from doing what we ought to be doing sometimes, but rather just asking things to be disputatious. It's increasing, like I've told you, it's, it's just increasing more and more. So, Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for those of you who pray for us and help us. Thank you so very much. We love you. Uh, thank you. We pray for so many. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for your brethren. Pray for your sisters. Reach out. Contact them. See how they're doing today. Love you. Thanks for watching this if you do. See you in the next video.